am very pleasantly surprised to find a lot of photographic documentation, which is incredible and actually brings to light a very different way of looking at architecture and documenting a process of a city's construction and building. Even if you look at the museum, for that matter, the government museum and art gallery, the way the light is penetrating into a triple height central space, the way the aerators are softly bringing in the breeze, the way the bricellae is the undulatory glazing is creating a rhythm, the way the brick walls are. So it's, it's a kind of music which is there in the buildings for those who care to stop and listen. It is actually a symphony and to be able to understand that symphony, I think it's a lot of understanding has come through this photographic documentation that he has done. And that photographic documentation, I think, has proven once again that the language of architecture is the visual. There were, he was talking in French. The laborers were talking in Punjabi, Hindi, and Urdu. The engineers were talking in English. And nobody knew the other person's language. And they created a city out of this, which purely shows that his reliance on the graphic was very important. And he used photography as a medium to sort of document each building and create a metaphor or a reflectance for the next. I feel that the photograph can give a lot of more information than a drawing can. Firstly, because it can tell you more about the, the context which was there when the building was realized. For example, in the Museum and Art Gallery, there is this row of trees, which is the Silver Oak Avenue right in front of it, and you cannot see the museum. It's completely hidden from the Leisure Valley now. But this archival picture gives me a notion of how beautiful this museum was when seen from the Leisure Valley. And the silver oaks are just beginning to be built. So it's sort of, it's, it's a patina of change which will come slowly. So I get these layers of history when I see a photograph. So when I, and I also see uh, these photographs are of a time when it was black and white photography. So I can, I can read more into these pictures because I can see the shadow, I can see the shade, I can see the different textures even more beautifully than the colored pictures now. So the value that these, these, black and white photographs hold to me is of much more intense. The way uh, Pierre Jeanre captured the shade and shadow is very important because at the CCA I have come across some very important and pertinent photographs which are taken from the inside than from the outside. Normally you would photograph buildings from the outside. Here I am finding a lot of pictures which are taken from the inside, looking outside, which means that the documentation that jean Ray was doing was not just looking at the building from the perspective of a visitor, but also that from the perspective of a user. For example, there are these pictures which are taken from inside the high court, looking outside. And you can see the shadow patterns of the great louvers and the bricellae on the floor of the piazza, which means the textures and patterns are not just there on the vertical surfaces, but are also there as a shade and shadow on the floor, which would otherwise be very bare. So how the light is falling on the building and hitting the ground and creating a shade and shadow is is a nuance.